the start of the second half. This will be fielded at the six. Out come the Colts. They'll have it first here to start quarter number three. They come up in an offset eye. They go play action here on first down. Oh, incomplete. A turnover would have really helped there. Almost intercepted. Instead, it's just second down. Tremendous coverage there. Just did not catch the football and complete the interception. But what do they say all the time? If he had really good hands, he'd be playing offense. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he'll take this up over the 40 to about the 41. Give him four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. And third quarter here, you've got the lead. This is where that strong run game can really benefit you. Stayed in bounds there, kept the clock going. I like all the points you just made there. And if you throw the football and it's incomplete, now you've stopped the clock and you've helped out the guys on the other side of the ball. So keep it in the hands of those runners. Keep moving it. Keep grinding the clock. It's a gain of 17 and it'll give them a first down. There's good push to the tight end and I think that we're looking at something out of central casting, frankly. Absolutely. I mean, size, the hands. Speed. I mean, can flat out run. You put that whole package together, you line up the eyes of an offensive coordinator, don't you? So the offense lining up first and 10. They come out here in the eye. Going to give this time to the tailback. And he's going to take it down to about the 35 here. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. That was a good run. Probably right on the edge of breaking into something really big. So the defensive guys right now are talking about, okay, what can we do to slow him down before he truly gets started? Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. Wide open receiver complete. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15. A good pick up there, a 22. One of the feature points of the end route is being able to make a nice throw to the middle part of the field. And for a quarterback, that's one of the better throws and better looks that he'll get. But he has to be careful not to wait too long and let his receiver wander into some tough territory. If he's late with the ball, he can get his receiver hit and hit hard. And now the offense operates in the red zone. They'll run it now out of the gun. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. And he has not been able to find the same type of running room this week as last. It, you know, such a great game. We met with him. He came in, had the biggest smile on his face, so we just thought that would carry over. Sometimes you wonder if maybe it borders on a little overconfidence. They were so good last week. He's getting extra blocking out on the perimeter from the wide receivers to get him downfield. In this game, maybe he came into it with the idea that it's just going to be like last week, be a piece of cake. And what they're getting from the defense isn't exactly the same, and boy, it's been tough going for him. Seventh play of the drive, forthcoming on third and eight. He'll look to throw. And he will be hit from behind and run over. Wow. Looks like a nine-yard loss. And it also brings up fourth. And no matter what the situation, the O-line just hates that because they feel like they didn't protect little brother back there, right? Man, that's just so difficult for them because just think about every single play. When you decide to throw the football, you're dealing with some of the best athletes on the planet. You talk about guys, if they weren't playing football, they'd be starring in the NBA at power forward. It's a really difficult task. So now on fourth down, Chuck Pagano turns to the field goal unit here. From the left hash, this from 37. And the 11-year veteran bangs it through, and that'll push the lead up to 17. So the scoring drive encompasses nine plays, but the net gain, three points. And you're going to have drives like that in this league. Sometimes you just got to take the three and move on. Always better than nothing. The Colts kicking team is out there now, and they will send this one away. 
This is taken at the three. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Now the Colts' defensive unit trots back out there. Had a touchdown given up the last time they were out there, so maybe need to refocus a little bit. And make sure that they don't start finger-pointing with each other because oftentimes when a touchdown's given up, you say, okay, where did that happen? Who broke down? Who gave it up? Instead, just go back out there, be a unit again, and try and play a little bit better. Yeah, see if they can play a little bit better on this drive. Give them three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Let's go! Three and eighteen! They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. With the struggles we're seeing up front for the offense today, they've got to think about changing up their play calling. Some screens, some draws, some quick hitting plays in order to try and supplement the run game. You don't totally abandon it, but you try and give it a little bit of help. And on third and eight, defensively, they're going to beef up the secondary. Six defensive backs. Looking to throw. And he dropped it. Now it was tipped. Altered the ball a little bit, but he dropped it. And now fourth down. But well, partner, anytime someone tells me their fundamentals are leaving the game, I'm going to show them this play because they couldn't get to the passer. So what do you have to do? Get your hands up in the passing lane, and they batted it away on a third down attempt. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. This is taken around the 12. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards. Well struck. And the offense will come back onto the field for the first and 10. We focus our attention now on the Broncos' defense. And last time out, they gave up three. But with this deficit, how important here is it to not give up any points? And they're at a point now where they can't allow any thoughts of any points to enter their mind. They gave up three last time. That felt okay. They can't settle for okay now. They have to stop them here. Zero points given up. Yeah, they need to stop, get the ball back to the offense. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. A nice pickup there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. It's really come into vogue to talk about the different gaps that the defense tries to attack in an offensive line. And most of the time, we're talking about blitzes. How many times have you heard double A-gap blitz? But where is the A-gap? It's the space between the center and the guards, either side. So when you're having a double-A gap blitz, there's two guys coming through that gap. In this situation, though, that A gap wasn't open for the defense to exploit. The offensive line took care of it, protected it, and moved the defensive guys out of the way to allow for that nice run. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And he'll get this up to about the 40. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. And after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field, but it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job, keep it up, and we'll break that one soon. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. Again, we'll see the pistol here. And he'll give it here to his running back. He'll get three up to midfield. A couple of Broncos there in on the tackle. So the offense now dealing with a second and seven. Another pistol look here. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. 
That catch good for five. It's third down. I think what we're seeing today, partner, is what happens when you have a really good game the previous week. You get a lot more attention from the defensive coordinator. Yeah. It looks to me like they spent a lot of time figuring out tendencies, how they get him the football, and adjusting accordingly. Well, they've adjusted, and the numbers certainly show that. And they'll go on the ground. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. All right, here we go. Three, 19. They'll look to throw now on first down. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. It'll go as a gain of 12. And that'll be good for an Indianapolis first. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. He's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. Five yards on the carry, good pickup on first down. I think that run gives us evidence that the defense is getting a little bit tired out there. They've been out in the field for a long time, and that last run, they just cut right through them. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll fight forward maybe to the line of scrimmage, but that's all. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. They'll look to throw here. Going to throw deep for the end zone. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. It wasn't third and long. It was more like third and attainable. And oftentimes, offense just want to run enough to pick up a first down. But I think they wanted to break tendency there. Catch the defense playing for the short pass and push it downfield. And they almost collected a big play. So he splits the uprights there, and I would imagine it's nice as a kicker. Right when it leaves your foot, you know it's good. Yeah, it's kind of like a golfer that picks up his tee after a nice drive without even watching it land. Solid analogy. I like it. The Colts kicking team is out there now, and they will send this one away. This one fielded at the five. And a good return. He's across the 35-yard line right around the 36. And Denver getting set to take the field. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked go to so something well, else. and maybe try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. We just saw another example of how the defense is winning this game. Really at the point of attack, the offensive line is just getting pushed around. I think now as a play caller, you've got to give them a little bit of help. Maybe you keep your tight ends a little bit more. Maybe the running backs help you a little bit with the pass blocking. But you've got to help them get some confidence because you can't abandon the play calling right now. A gain of a yard gets them back where they started. Now it's third and ten. Defense has set themselves up nicely. Third and ten now. the shotgun he'll look to throw and he'll be brought down by the Colts and now that brings up fourth down there a loss of six yards on the sack partner the Mike linebacker the middle linebacker has so many different responsibilities how excited do you think he was to get home with that blitz yeah he wants a sack he got it The Broncos send out their punter now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. That'll be a 48-yard punt, one yard on the return. And possession will switch hands first and 10. 
And the Colts coming out now. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. It's funny, throughout the time that we've been together when we talk with running backs about the ability to catch the ball, their eyes light up when they talk about open field and having one-on-one -on -one matchups, don't they? Yeah, they do, and that's the reason why. What we just saw, shedding those tackles, and that's what they're used to doing. It is, and it starts at the beginning of the play, one-on-one -on -one matchup if someone's trying to cover them, but they also like those one-on-ones downfield after the catch when they're running with the ball. They think they're going to win those, too. Now a handoff here to his running back. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. That was a really nice play, being able to stack that one up. When they get back in the huddle, he's got he's to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free, and make the hit on the runner. And filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. Green, 39. Ah. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. Deep drop. And that is incomplete. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we played three quarters. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. It's the Colts. They've got control of the football. They also have the lead as we start the fourth. drop to throw muscles him off and he'll get up near the 45 they'll spot it at the 44 give him eight on the play and that's going to make it fourth down the Colts send out their punter as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. And a look here at the Colts' defense. Their stay on the field last time was short-lived with a three and out. See if they can get some more of that. And ordinarily, you want to be on the field playing, right? But three and out, that's almost gold to a defense. Get to the bench, get some rest, turn the ball over to your offense. We'll see what they can do here, see if they can force another three and out. And a short gain there as he'll get it up only to about the 24. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Second down following the run. gun they'll look to throw out to the flat that's complete to his running back give him two yards on that play and it'll be third down I'm going to show my age here a little bit we used to talk about running backs catching the ball as safety valves nowadays they're a big part of the passing offense quit acting like you're so old you're only 65 <laughs> Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Third down, the Colts beefing up the secondary. Six defensive backs in the game. They're going to look to throw. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And that one good for 16 yards and a first. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. It'll go in the books as a seven-yard loss on the sack. And it's third down. And on that one, the protection just broke down. You've got to have that leverage, don't you? We always talk about low man wins in the running. And he'll be wrapped up around the waist and pushed down. 
He could not get away that time, and it'll be a loss of 11 on third down. Well, we knew this guy wasn't especially fleet of foot, but he tried to conjure up some escapability, but there was no way he was getting away on that one. The Broncos send out their punter now. He's been terrific so far. Averaging 50 yards a boot so far as this one's away. Shreds the tackle. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And now we get a look at the captain of this offense heading back out there now. And the stats on the screen tell the story. A great start. This defense, they've made some good adjustments, so he's fallen off since. Have to like what they did at the half, but you also have to like the fact that they hung in there. Despite the fact they had a tough first half, he was locked in, right? Rocking and rolling. They came out, made their adjustments, got their confidence back. Now they're causing him all sorts of trouble. When a coaching staff sees their team run the ball this successfully in the fourth quarter, they're really excited because you can plan for a running game all you want and want to press that advantage when you get it, but for the most part, it's a little bit of a surprise. And right now, they're going to keep that going, want to continue to grind out the clock because it's definitely in their favor at this stage of the game. Can they close the game out and continue to do exactly what we just saw there, and that's run the football. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up in the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. Back to throw. Finding time. And he's out of bounds, able to take this one up to the 35. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. Defense looking to hold serve one last time here on third and seven. And they'll go with a ground attack here. And unable to get downhill there as he'll take this up to about the 37. Two yards on the pick up there. It's fourth down. The Colts send out their punter as he's on for the fifth time here today. Call it 46 yards on the punt, just a single yard on the return as he was covered quickly. And out will come the offense as they take over. Now this Broncos offensive unit ready to head back out onto the field. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. <laughs> Big time. And he is out of bounds, getting it across the 30-yard line. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen when they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield, a really nice pickup. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs, as we just saw there. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. And as the numbers show, last week good, this week not as good. My question to you, you ready? Yes, please hit me. Why? Because last week, he was able to find the seams and defenses and the ball was delivered before a second guy could get there and make a play on it. 
This week, those seams aren't even there. The coverage has been really tight. The second guys arrived early. Not a chance for him to get the ball into those tight openings. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. to throw again. Finding his safety valve here. That's complete. Five yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up what looks to be a third and in inches. Can't be more than a half a foot. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's got the first down before being taken down at the 46. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. It's nice every now and then in this game not to see people overthink it. Just hand it to the old reliable guy, let him pick up the first down. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. Now they'll throw here, out of the gun. Quick hitter here, it's complete. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Oh. Offense staying ahead of the chains here, second and three. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And he will find his man on the outside. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him, and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. They'll look to throw here on first down. And he's got his man on the out route. The completion good for three, and it's second down. But well, that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. to throw again and he fires one that's intercepted a great read and it's picked off and his guys are going to take over at the 31 yard line well this defensive pressure has been constant all game long the pass rush the coverage they've all been excellent and now they'll tack on an interception here as this one continues to slip just further and further out of hand Indianapolis set to take the field. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. Officially no gain on the play, and they're left with a third and eight. Time for a break. We're back to finish this one off after this. So the Colts in possession of the football as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. And to give this time to the tailback. And the hole closes quickly. He gets it across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Just a gain of two there, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. 
Oh, look at the juke. Oh, nice spin. Oh, that brought back bad memories. A good return there, 17 yards. The Colts defense, they worked their way back onto the field. They've played excellent. Another stop here, that would just be the icing on the cake. You definitely want to finish things off the way it's gone throughout the day, and it's gone awfully well for them. They don't want to give up any type of a fluke, any type of a big play here. That'll leave a bad taste in their mouth as they go in and celebrate. Yeah, they want that good cake taste, right? No doubt about it. That six-layer cake. <laughs> They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. They give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works a defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. to throw now on first down. Now they go screen, it's complete. No gain on the screen there, it's second down. They're gonna hurry back to the line now. Back to throw now on second and 10. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm, incomplete. Now it's third down. It looked like he might have had a window there, but the rhythm was just a little bit off. It certainly was, because everything that has to come together to get a pass completed, yeah, here, right, the sink just wasn't there. On third down, it dropped a throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that one incomplete. Had some position, but couldn't hold on, and it brings up fourth down. One thing I know from experience is that when the deep ball is thrown and you're the defender, you've got to fight that little bit of panic that emerges. You've got to play the ball really well. It's a 50-50 jump ball play. And guess what? They took a shot. How are you going to win it? And in this case, they managed to get it done. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And a great effort there to shed the contact. And it helps him pick up the first. And the offense moving quickly to the line. On first down, he'll drop to throw. And he just gets rid of it. Throws it away. The wise move there. Looked like nobody open. Now second down. Second down here after the incomplete pass. Here we go now. Back to throw again. And a quick throw here, that's complete. That catch good for five, it's third down. Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five, and they're gonna hurry back to the line now. They're gonna look to throw. Gonna throw right side here, complete. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. And this is going to be caught. So it affects the final score, not the outcome, but it is a late touchdown here on the game's final play. Well, that's what I call an answer right there. They gave up a sack on the previous play. How about what they did to finish things off, turning it right back around? That's the response, and that O-line feels a lot better now, don't they? Yeah, without a doubt, because give up the sack on the previous play, that just hurts those guys, because they never want to see their guy get hit. Just a formality now, but here's the extra point. And it's good, but it's also of little consequence as this game is over. Well, on the one side, if you try to take away something positive from this game, they played to the final whistle, getting the touchdown there on the last play, but still all for naught, really. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say give them points for positivity. I like that. That part is good. But I often wonder, when the game is settled and the clock is run out, do we really need to kick the extra point? Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's silly. It's it, silly. It doesn't make any sense to me. I know that people have explained before, well, you got to play it all the way through. Come on. This thing was done. 
So for the Colts, they close out this first half at a very solid 6-2. And, and they will hit the road next week to take on the San Diego Chargers. Meanwhile, for the Broncos, the struggles intensify as they drop to 2-6 and six now on the year. And they'll be on the road next week as they get a date with the Jaguars in Jacksonville. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gunn. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Colts are winners as we say so long from Indianapolis.